Hello, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs. With this video, I'm going to talk about how you can determine whether or not a stock is worthy of the intensive effort required to conduct a comprehensive research and due diligence effort. Researching stocks is not easy, and it takes time and effort. And one of the things that frustrates me the most is to spend a lot of time researching a stock only to discover that I don't consider it worthy of investing my capital. With this video, I'm going to try to give some insights into how you can avoid making that costly mistake regarding your time and effort. In order to do that, I'm going to take a look at seven companies, six of which are very high profile, quintessential examples of the exact types of companies that I personally favor investing in. However, in addition to researching companies that I admire or I'm attracted to based on the quality of their business and their historical results, valuation will become a cornerstone towards determining whether or not a stock is really worthy of spending the time to dig deeper into. I'm going to start out by taking a look at Church and Dwight, probably best known for their Arm & Hammer baking soda product. And what I've got here on the screen is a plotting of their operating earnings going back to 1998. And as you can see, this company has consistently grown earnings year after year and during this long period of time at a rate of over 15% a year. But I think especially noteworthy, and I alluded to it in the written portion of this article, is how well they performed during both the recession of 2001 as well as the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. There was no recession from a business point of view for this company in either case. Next, I'm going to add a plotting of the company's dividend and its dividend payout ratio. And there's a couple of noteworthy concepts here. First of all, you can see that the dividend has steadily increased over time. But you can also see, starting in 2010, that the company increased their dividend payout ratio. The green shaded area represents earnings, and the area below the white line represents the portion of earnings that are actually paid out to shareholders. And on fast graphs, we also represent that by placing it on top of the graph. So you can see this huge increase in dividend payout ratio in recent years. So thus far, we see a quintessential example of precisely the kind of company that I'm looking to be a long-term investor in. But now comes the bugaboo here, if you will. I'm going to add monthly closing stock prices to the graph. That's the black line. As you can see, the stock price tracks earnings, and it does get to periods of overvaluation. But since we came out of the recession, as the economy improved and as investors gained confidence, I want you to notice that the valuation of Church and Dwight reached unprecedented heights over the last seven or eight years. The orange line on this graph represents a P.E. ratio of 15.1 or equal to the company's growth rate. I'm going to add another valuation reference here called the normal P.E. And as you can see, the market has had a penchant to putting a high valuation on this stock. This blue line represents a normal P.E. of 21.3 for this time frame. And you can see clearly that even given that higher valuation based on perhaps the consistency of its operating history, valuations have become very aberrant over the last couple of years. So next, I'm going to analyze a little bit of why that might have occurred. An increasing payout ratio might have been part of that increased optimism or favor for this company. But let's look at growth rate. So let me start cutting some time off of this graph. I'm going to go down here to 2005 to current, and we notice immediately, or I notice immediately, that the growth rate has now fallen to 11.7% from 15%. This orange line now represents a P.E. ratio of 15. I'm going to drop a few more years off of the graph, and I see that the earnings growth has actually dropped to 97 so this now becomes a little bit befuddling again because what I'm seeing here is a slowdown in growth, perhaps an increase in payout ratio, but I'm seeing higher valuations being afforded this stock than ever before. And then finally, I'm going to cut it down a few more years, and we see now the growth rate is 7.8%. So we've got slowing growth and yet excessive valuations. The current blended P.E. ratio is over 28, and that's even in excess of the higher than normal P.E. ratio 
that has been applied to this company over the last four or five years. Now, in the article, I also talked about the importance of forecasting and having a reasonable expectation of what your future returns might be. Well, this is a reasonably widely followed stock. You'll notice here there are over 20 analysts that are for making forecasts for the next couple of years. And going out to 2020, or fiscal year end 2020, these analysts on average are expecting about a 7.6% growth rate which is reasonably consistent with what the company has done in recent years. Now, if I apply normal P.E. ratios, here I've got a 15 P.E. ratio, recognizing that the market likes to apply a high value to this company, and I'm using a 24 normal P.E. here, I still see that I have rather muted future return potential, primarily based on the result of the high valuation that we currently see. If I look longer term out here, the number of analysts drops to only six analysts, but I do get a 9% forecast rate of return going out to 2022. But once again, even if I apply a higher valuation, like using a, a calculation using a 22 PE ratio here, we would see a, a rate of return potential of 6%. So the point is that valuation is clearly excessive for this company. That becomes even more clear when you go back and look at its long-term picture here. I really don't see any rational justification for this valuation. I would love to own this company, but I'm really not going to waste my time digging into its operating capabilities right now, its potential future growth, etc., simply because its current valuation is thwarting me from spending the time and effort required to understand this company better. Now, my next example is General Mills. I'm going to move a little quicker here than I did with Church and Dwight, which I was attempting to give you some insights into what we're looking at here. As I look at General Mills, I can see that based on a normal valuation, this stock is much more reasonably valued, offers a 3.6% current yield, which is reasonably attractive in today's interest rate environment. And the company is forecast to grow at a very low rate going forward. I think that's something to consider. So here we have valuations based on normal PEs that might make sense. So if I was looking for high dividend yield, General Mills might be a company that I would currently spend a little, be willing to spend a little time evaluating. With my next example, I'm going to look at the AAA rated Johnson & Johnson. And once again, you see this relationship between earnings and price. You see periods of high valuation. And I, I, I do want to point out that when valuations get excessive like they were back in 1999 for Johnson & Johnson, even though this company had terrific operating results, the rate of return, including dividend income over this time frame, was really not that strong. However, if you'd have bought it when it was fairly valued, and here's another example of a company that went through both of the last two recessions with very little stress, then your rate of return as it moved into this higher valuation becomes exceptional at 11%. So Johnson & Johnson is a company that has historically grown at 9%. More recently, it's been growing at 6%. It's After all, it's a $358 billion company now. So I would consider Johnson & Johnson overvalued today. And therefore, I might not want to spend the time if, it, if I didn't already have a position in this company, and I do, um, to spend a lot of time researching it for new money, but I do already own it, and I'm not willing to sell it because of the quality of the company, you know, the fact that I purchased it at a much lower cost. With my next example, I'm going to look at McCormick & Company, the spice company is most of it's, you know, known for. And I'm going to do something that I should have also done or could have done with General Mills. I'm going to look at McCormick from a standpoint of operating cash flows. And I see a little better valuation picture here and a little better correlation of price to cash flow. But even when I look at cash flows, I see very high valuations here relative to historical norms. And of course, when I look at adjusted operating earnings here, I see valuations that are aberrantly high. Consequently, as much as I would love to own this company with its A- minus rating, its 22% debt, and its absolutely impeccable long-term operating history, 
I'm simply not willing to spend the time and effort researching this company when the valuation is already so high. I would need to see it back at a reasonable valuation like it is historically resulted in, in in historical periods of time where it was very attractive because then I was buying the earnings power at a fair and reasonable price. But with my next example, I'm going to take a look at Nike here. And what you see with Nike is very interesting. You see how it traded at a reasonable 15 PE ratio and its earnings growth rate was 10%. What's a little different with this company is as I shorten the time frame here, its growth rate has actually accelerated since 2000. In 13, it's been averaging about 14.5%. By the way, this has a May fiscal year. So earnings growth is accelerating in this example, which partially explains why the valuation has increased on this stock relative to historical valuations. However, as I look at going forward, the company is expected to continue growing at a high rate. The three to five year trend line growth rate is over 12%. That's significantly above average. And if I look at it at its normal price earnings multiple of a PE of 24 over the last five years, it would look reasonably valued there. But the key is, am I willing to spend the time and effort to research a stock that's currently trading at a PE ratio of almost 24? And I also want to point out that one reason I chose this example is because you can see where the PE got really excessive how we had a significant correction recently in Nike stock price. I would love to own this company, but I'm really not willing to spend the time and effort that goes into evaluating it right now with valuation so high. I prefer a bargain. With my next example, I'm going to look at Walgreens Boots Alliance. As you can see, this company has historically been very highly valued by the marketplace. It really went through both of our most recent recessions reasonably well. When I take price off here, you can see that a little bit of weakness during the Great Recession, but almost no weakness at all during the 2000 recession. But I also want you to notice that periods of high valuation typically resulted in very poor long-term performance for the company. You don't make any money buying a business even as great as this one at very high valuations. Now, what's interesting is it's becoming intriguing now because valuations are starting to come into alignment and if I shorten this time frame down here, we also see that we've got double digit growth and we're starting to see a point where the stock price is now possibly reasonable. So at, this is one of the few companies in this group of companies that I admire that I'd be willing to start spending some time doing a little work in because I believe the future return potential is double digit on this company. Um, although I, you know, I might want to buy it a little cheaper but I would be very comfortable buying this stock at today's valuation if I was looking for double digit total returns. With my final example on this list, I'm gonna take a look at one of the hottest stocks in the marketplace today. If you look at this company's historical operating results, it's obviously it's a tech stock. It's got some cyclicality to it, but I do want you to notice this acceleration of growth here in recent years. The company is heavily involved in artificial intelligence. It's a semiconductor maker. Uh, I'm not going to dig into the intricacies of the company, but uh, self-driving automobiles and artificial intelligence are some of the things that have really gotten people excited about this stock. The long-term growth rate's been 20%. The, the more recent growth rate has been 20%. But if I shorten it just to the last few years, growth has actually increased to over 30%. So this somewhat justifies the hype in the company. But you know, it's now an $83 billion company, and it is forecast to continue growing at 20% a year. And the longer term growth rate's a little more muted at about 13% a year. But the point is, is this stock really worth spending the time to research on? It's obviously had an enormous run over the last couple of years. And, you know, the prices, the, the, the performance since September of 2015 has been nothing short of extraordinary. But the real question is, is this the time to be looking at and taking a position in NVIDIA? Or would you have been better served to invest it in it when its valuation was more sound? So I think all of these stocks are research worthy from a standpoint of the quality of the businesses. The real question is whether the valuations warrant a, a closer look. And in my opinion, only Walgreens Boots Alliance and General Mills are worthy of spending any time on right now 
But if the valuations were correct, I'd love to own any of these seven selections. This has been Chuck Carnival. I hope you found this video interesting and appreciate your watching. Thanks.